Osteoporosis medications are medications used to treat osteoporosis, which is a condition where decreased bone strength increases the risk of a broken bone. Osteoporosis is most commonly associated with the elderly, menopause, hyperparathyroidism, malabsorption, and with the use of some medications, like corticosteroids. So, the underlying cause of osteoporosis is an imbalance between bone resorption and bone formation, which are normal processes of bone remodeling. Now, in bone remodeling, the process begins when osteoblasts sense microfractures near their location. The osteoblasts produce a substance called rank L, or receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa beta ligand, which binds to rank receptors on the surface of nearby monocytes. Rank L induces those monocytes to fuse together to form a multinucleated osteoclast cell. Rank L also helps the osteoclast mature and activate so they can start resorbing bones. The osteoclast starts secreting lysomal enzymes, mostly collagenase, which digests the collagen protein in the organic matrix. This drills pits on the bone surface, known as Hauschip's lacunae. Osteoclasts also start producing hydrochloric acid, or HCl, which dissolves hydroxyapatite into soluble calcium, or Ca2+, and phosphate, or PO42- ions, and these ions get released into the bloodstream. Osteoblasts and osteoclasts are also controlled by two hormones, parathyroid hormone, which is released by parathyroid glands, and calcitonin, which is released by the thyroid gland. At low concentrations, parathyroid hormone works by stimulating the activity of osteoblasts, which promotes bone formation, while at high concentrations, parathyroid hormone stimulates bone resorption. On the other hand, calcitonin works by inhibiting osteoclast activity, which decreases bone resorption. All right, moving on to pharmacology. Osteoporosis medications are subdivided into two main groups, non-hormonal medications, which include bisphosphonates and denosumab, and hormonal modulators, which include teriparatide, calcitonin, and raloxifene. First, let's start with bisphosphonates, which are first-line therapy for the prevention and treatment of osteoporosis. Bisphosphonates can be subdivided into two main groups, simple, non-nitrogenous bisphosphonates, which include atidronate and teludronate, and potent, nitrogenous bisphosphonates, which include alendronate, abandronate, pamidronate, resedronate, and zelodronate. Bisphosphonates work by binding to hydroxyapatite, which is the mineralized form of calcium found in bones. When osteoclasts break down bones, they also take in the bisphosphonates. Simple, non-nitrogenous bisphosphonates are very similar to pyrophosphate, which is used to synthesize the ATP that provides energy in living cells. So, bisphosphonates work by getting added to ADP to form non-functional ATP analogs that don't provide energy, and instead, they build up in the osteoclast. This eventually leads to apoptosis or cell death, and ultimately, fewer osteoclasts means less bone resorption. On the other hand, potent nitrogenous bisphosphonates work by inhibiting the osteoclast mevalonate pathway, which disrupts the synthesis of cholesterol. Since cholesterol is important for the function of the cell membrane and many enzymes, this decrease in cholesterol causes the osteoclast to become non-functional. Besides osteoporosis, other indications for bisphosphonates include Paget's disease of bone, which is a condition characterized by abnormal bone remodeling that results in fragile, misshapen bones, osteogenesis imperfecta, which is a genetic condition characterized by increased bone fragility, and metastatic bone disease, which occurs when cancer spreads from another organ to bone. Since osteoclasts can break down bones to release calcium into the blood, their inhibition will decrease blood calcium levels, making it effective in the treatment of hypercalcemia. All right, moving on to the side effects of bisphosphonates. Oral bisphosphonates are most commonly associated with upper gastrointestinal side effects, such as esophagitis, esophageal ulcers, and gastric irritation. In order to prevent this, individuals are advised to take oral bisphosphonates with plenty of water and stay in the upright position for at least 30 minutes. 
On the other hand, intravenous bisphosphonates don't cause any gastrointestinal disturbances, but they can lead to rare and more severe side effects, such as osteonecrosis of the jaw. Let's move on to denosumab, which is a human monoclonal antibody that binds rank L and prevents it binding to rank receptors on the surface of osteoclasts and their precursors. This prevents the activation and maturation of osteoclasts, which limits bone breakdown. For indications, denosumab can be used subcutaneously every six months for the treatment of postmenopausal osteoporosis, or every month in the treatment of individuals with bone metastases. Some common side effects of denosumab include hypocalcemia, hypophosphatemia, and infections. Moreover, just like bisphosphonates, they can cause osteonecrosis of the jaw. Now let's switch gears and shift our focus onto hormonal modulators. First, let's start with teriparatide, a recombinant analog of the parathyroid hormone, which is given subcutaneously once per day. Instead of decreasing bone breakdown, teriparatide works by stimulating the osteoblasts and reducing their apoptosis, so they can build more bones than what is being lost. Common side effects include transient hypercalcemia and an increased risk of developing osteosarcoma, so it should be avoided when the person has other diseases that also increase the risk of developing osteosarcoma, like those with Paget's disease of the bone. Next up is calcitonin, which is a peptide hormone that works by directly inhibiting osteoclast activity, which decreases bone breakdown. At the same time, calcitonin stimulates osteoblasts to build more bones. Finally, it decreases the concentration of serum calcium and phosphate by increasing their excretion by the kidneys. There are two types of calcitonin, synthetic human calcitonin, synthetic salmon calcitonin, also known as salcatonin, is more convenient due to its longer half-life and greater potency. Calcitonin can be administered by injection or intranasally, and it's indicated in the treatment of postmenopausal and corticosteroid-induced osteoporosis, hypercalcemia, and Paget's disease of bone. Okay, last but not least, we have raloxifene. Raloxifene is a selective estrogen receptor modulator, or for short, CIRM which has a partial agonist effect on estrogen receptors in bones, so it's useful in the treatment of osteoporosis in postmenopausal individuals. But, besides being a partial agonist of estrogen receptors in bone tissue, raloxifene is also an antagonist of these receptors in breast tissue, so it can also be used in the prevention of breast cancer. Common side effects of raloxifene include hot flashes and an increased risk of venous thrombosis. Now, let's make a simple and fun mnemonic that'll help you efficiently memorize and retain all of these farm facts. Let's place our scene in an archaeological site with a big sign of a broken bone, representing osteoporosis medications. The site has two areas. One is the fossil bed for our non-hormonal drugs, and the other is a lab area with different flasks of chemicals to represent the hormones. At the fossil bed, we can start with the bisphosphonates, which all have a suffix dronate, so we'll place a drone flying over the site. Now under the drone, it's carrying a battery with the word ATP on it, and on top of the drone is a stick of butter to represent cholesterol. This will help remind you that the mechanism of those drugs is either to inhibit ATP synthesis or cholesterol synthesis within osteoclasts. For side effects, the drone is leaking battery acid and it's damaging a rare fossilized stomach. This will help you remember that it irritates the GI tract. The battery acid is also damaging the jawbone of a T-Rex, which represents osteonecrosis of the jaw. Next, we have denosumab, which will be represented by a dentist working on the fossil. He's wearing a very wrinkly shirt to help you remember that it targets rank L. For side effects, let's have him working on the damaged jawbone, since it also causes jaw osteonecrosis. He also has a runny nose, which represents the increased risk for infections. Next to him, there's an empty milk bottle for hypocalcemia, and inside, there's a broken phosphorescent glow stick for hypophosphatemia. Okay, moving on to the lab area, where we keep our hormonal osteoporosis medications. First, let's have a pterodactyl in a cage 
being parachuted down to the researcher, and it represents Terry Paratide. The parachute will also remind you that this is an analog of parathyroid hormone. For the side effects, let's give the pterodactyl a large bottle of milk for hypercalcemia, and there's also a scarecrow made of bones in its cage for osteosarcoma. The scarecrow is wearing a pager that's on fire because this drug is contraindicated in people with Paget's disease of bone, which increases the risk of developing osteosarcoma. Okay, moving on to calcitonin. Since calcitonin tones the bones, we'll have a researcher testing bone conduction with a giant tuning fork. Finally, we have raloxifene, which will be represented by a researcher wearing a large counterfeit watch that says Ralox. Now, she's the only woman researcher on the team, and this will help you remember raloxifene targets estrogen receptors. For side effects, she's fanning herself because she has hot flashes, and she's giving a friendly thumbs up to the other researchers to represent venous thrombosis. All right, as a quick recap, osteoporosis medications can be subdivided into two main groups, non-hormonal medications, which include bisphosphonates and denosumab, and hormonal modulators, which include teriparatide, calcitonin, and raloxifene. These are all used to treat osteoporosis, which is a condition where decreased bone strength increases the risk of bone fractures. Many of these medications can also treat Paget's disease of bone, which is caused by abnormal bone remodeling. The exception is teriparatide, since it increases the risk of developing osteosarcomas. But wait, there's more! Here's a mind map with all of the mnemonics. Go ahead and pause the video so you can test yourself to see what you remember. Stay tuned for the answers after the credits.